So Bitcoin is down around 10% today. And we have to ask ourselves, who is causing this Bitcoin crash? Is it BlackRock? Is it Jerome Powell? Or is it just simply a classroom full of degens trading shit coins? Well, today we're going to be answering that question by diving straight into some charts that I've got prepared for you guys. So everybody who zoomed in on the four hour chart of Bitcoin is saying, oh my God, Bitcoin's dead. It's crashing. Oh my God, what's happening? Well, I'll tell you what's happening. Bitcoin's down, what, 10% on the day-ish from the, from the very top to the very bottom. And that is absolutely nothing. That is absolutely nothing to be concerned about. Because as we can see, Bitcoin is still consolidating and still setting higher lows. There's nothing to see here. And when we have a look at what's happening in the stock market, it's going to become a little bit clearer about what's actually happening. Okay. We're going to get to that. I want to talk about the liquidations. Oh, I can hear two Lukes. Geez, that's the worst thing. You don't ever want to hear two Lukes, two dirty Australian uh, Luke accents. Sorry about that, guys. I had a uh, uh, one of those playing in the background, but we can see the liquidations uh, in the Bitcoin space over the past 24 hours. It's been very clear that DGENs have been leveraging Bitcoin. So we got $866 million liquidated in the last 24 hours. Now, what's funny about this is you can see here the ETH market cap is 30% of Bitcoin, but its liquidations are 70% of Bitcoin, which means that you have a bunch of DGENs trading crap coins. I'm really trying my best to not swear because a couple of people have said, hey, Luke, I'm watching these live streams with the kids. So I'm going to try to call them crap coins or poo coins moving forward. But we can see this is the ETH BTC chart. So the fact that it's been going down only for the past three years is showing you that Bitcoin is outperforming Ethereum. I might show you that chart zoomed out so you can kind of see what we're talking about. But, you know, since the 2017 all-time high peak uh, where Ethereum was worth 15% of a Bitcoin, ETH is down by over 60, it was funny, 69% against Bitcoin. I'm sorry, I kept it PG for about four seconds. But you can see pretty clearly ETH has been setting lower highs and lower lows against Bitcoin. But this doesn't stop DGENs from leveraging up their balance sheet, trading Ethereum and all sorts of other crap coins on the chain, okay? But what's most interesting is the most recent, uh, you know, price action, so to say, because if you zoom in, um, Ethereum is now dropping under this 5% of a Bitcoin level. And, you know, this is naturally causing a lot of leverage in the ETH space to get absolutely wiped out. So this is one reason for why we've seen a little bit of a correction in the Bitcoin space. Okay. Uh, we have DGENs levered up to the hilts. Okay. Again, we saw uh, how much $800 million of capital liquidated in the past 24 hours. Okay. Uh, now, the second reason for why we could be seeing a little bit of a correction uh, in the Bitcoin space could be due to some macro stuff. So this week, some inflation data came in a little bit hotter than expected in America, okay? Which is, again, interesting. We're going to talk about the global effects of what's going on uh, in inflation. But this has scared a few investors in the overall stock market, okay? Now, if we were to actually look at the stock market, we will be able to see... I don't know why I've got notifications going on, but we will actually be able to see uh, that... You know, the stock market is due for a correction. Now, we actually did a video on this maybe a week ago on the Bitcoin News YouTube channel. And we're kind of making the case, hey, you know, stocks look very extended. Like if you put this puppy on a weekly chart, you can see the stock market has pretty much just been up only since when is this? So this is October 2023. We can see that the stock market has rallied by, what's this, a lazy 37% in a straight line without a 2% correction. So we can see right now stocks are down probably, what, 2 to 3% from their peak? Oh, okay. Yeah, about 3.2% from their peak. And some people are saying, oh, Bitcoin's having a little bit of a correction because the stock market is having a little bit of a correction, Okay. I'm not so sure that's the case, okay? I still think Bitcoin is just kind of consolidating here. Uh, now, again, this isn't uh, ignore the fancy, you know, tea leave 
uh, reading lines on the chart, Bitcoin is just kind of consolidating under its previous all-time high. And this is something that Bitcoin's done on multiple different occasions in the past, okay? We're going to talk a little bit more about that in a future live stream I have planned for you guys. Um, but we can see, so the reason that markets would crash on hot inflation data is because now the Federal Reserve is pushing back its rate hike expectations, okay? So we can see from uh, this article here, it says inflation runs hot for the third straight month, driven by gas prices and rent prices continuing to increase. So what does this mean for the Federal Reserve? Well, we can see at the beginning of 2024, Wall Street traders had projected that the Fed would cut its interest rates by six or seven times this year. In March, Fed officials signaled that they envisioned three rate cuts, okay? Uh, but so again, this is like a, we've gone from six to seven rate cuts to three rate cuts. And now it looks like things are changing even more because we can see here, Elevated inflation readings for January and Feb, alongside signs that economic growth remains healthy, what a joke, we're going to get into that in a second, have led several Fed officials to suggest that fewer rate cuts may occur this year. So this is causing, you know, the stock market to sell off a little bit because I believe they're operating under the wrong assumptions. I think that the stock market thinks that rate cuts are good for the markets. When we have a look at the data, this is actually the opposite, okay? But before we get to the data, I want to have a look at what's happening globally, okay? Because uh, a lot of people have this very US-centric view, but when you actually have a look under the hood, so to say, and you have a look at what's happening all around the world, it's actually very, very, very clear uh, that, you know, the rest of the world is already cutting interest rates, which is actually pretty wild to think about. And uh, this is interesting because stock markets all around the world are essentially at all-time highs. Um, now, what I think is most interesting is the fact that when you see rate cuts, you typically actually see stock market crashes, okay? So I have a couple of charts I want to show you guys. I'm just trying to pull these out of my rear end right now while I'm talking to you guys. So we can see this isn't, this isn't a very clear chart, but we can see every single time the Fed has cut rates, over the past 20 years, this has actually caused a crash in the equity market. Maybe this chart here is going to be a little bit more uh, loving and generous to me. Let's have a look at this one. So we can see this is a chart going back to the 1980s. And we can see pretty clearly that every single time the blue line is cut, uh, we typically see a big crash in the stock market. You can see this most clearly uh, with the 2000 kind of technology bubble crash uh, and alongside the 2008 global financial uh, crisis crash. Uh, so it is, you know, I, most people think rate cuts are actually good for the markets. But when you have a look at the data, it's actually the opposite. Rate cuts are always a sign that the economy is bad. You know, uh, there's higher unemployment. There's not a lot of jobs in the market. The reason that the Fed cuts interest rates is because the economy is doing very poorly. Okay. So, uh, and this is obviously where stock markets uh, kind of catch up a little bit to what the Fed is doing. Okay. So I want to talk, we talked a little bit about macro. We talked a little bit about inflation. I want to talk about the Bitcoin whales. We're going to do that in a second, but I want to highlight something here. So we can see most recently gas prices have surged from 1.7% from February to March. That's a big increase in one month. And we can see that gas prices are up 22% from a year ago. Okay. Again, ask yourself, are we seeing, you know, you know, uh, two percent inflation like our government is trying to brainwash us into thinking we're seeing? Okay. I don't think so. When I go shopping, I notice that petrol's up 20, 30, 50% since 2020. I noticed that steak is up at least 50% since 2020. Okay. Again, I don't know why we get the fire. Pam tells me it's when I do two thumbs up, I get fireworks. Uh, I don't know. Well, there we go. Fireworks again, more fireworks. I'm sorry. Uh, maybe the fireworks are telling us that everybody's fed up with the inflation lies. Okay. But I don't know. When I go shopping, I think inflation is much, much, much higher than most people think it is. 
And this is a reason that some people believe interest rates might actually be risen again, okay? So despite the rest of the world is, you know, raising interest rates, like we can see by this chart here, some people think that the Fed might actually uh, raise interest rates. So they've gone from seven rate cuts to three rate cuts, and now they're talking about even fewer rate cuts, but we can see what's happening in the rest of the world. So the light green is showing you uh, the places around the world who have seen a first rate cut in the first quarter of 2024, okay? So a lot of the world, Russia is cutting rates. Uh, China is cutting rates. We can see that Mexico is cutting rates. Uh, we can also see that, I believe that is Brazil here in South America, also cutting interest rates along, okay, and Argentina, so this is in the blue. The darker blue is showing you the places that are expecting to, uh, you know, cut interest rates uh, in the second quarter of 2024. So that is this quarter, okay? January, February, March, that's the first quarter. April, May, June is the second quarter. So we can see my ex-home country, Australia, is going to be cutting interest rates this quarter. So is most of Southeast Asia. So is, by the looks of it, America and Canada, and so is Argentina, okay? So the world is cutting interest rates. This is what the market is telling us. Now, we've talked a little bit about the markets, what's going on in the markets. Something else I wanna talk about is what's normally historically normal for Bitcoin. So we can see by this chart here that it is very, very, very normal for Bitcoin to see these, you know, 29% corrections. So you guys can see on this chart, Bitcoin actually saw more than six corrections in 2017 that were larger than 29%. Okay, again, Bitcoin rallied from like what, $600 to $20,000 in under nine months in 2017. And throughout that rally, we saw six corrections bigger than 30%. Okay, let's go back to our chart because I think a 30% correction would scare a lot of people if it were to happen in Bitcoin right now. Okay, so this is the Bitcoin chart. And I kind of tweeted this out this morning and I said, look, Bitcoin's not even down 17% from its all-time high. We can see here uh, that you know Bitcoin is not even down 17% and the doomers are out there selling their Bitcoin, calling the cycle top, and, you know, this is just, again, a reminder that we are very, very early in this Bitcoin cycle. I believe we are. I mean, have a look uh, from the very top of Bitcoin's uh, price in, you know, when was this? So this was in uh, second week of March. Bitcoin hit $74,000. Since then, we've just really been correcting, okay? And when you put this puppy on a daily chart or maybe a weekly chart, you can see a little bit more perspective, okay? There you go. You guys are getting a good look at how slow my Wi-Fi is. Oh, my God. I mean, pulling teeth out all week. It's terrible. Um, we can see here that, you know, Bitcoin's very extended. And a nice correction here would, you know, it would not, not be anything out of the ordinary. Right now, the biggest correction we've got is about 18%. Says so when Bitcoin was at $73,500. The lowest that we've got so far is $61,000. Uh, right now, we just look like we're consolidating, okay? We will see. Bitcoin is gearing up for a big move now. That is definitely something I agree with. Uh, but, you know, corrections are healthy, uh, especially in bull markets. So this chart here measures the Bitcoin corrections in bull markets. Before we get there, I want to hit the chat. Um, and before we do a little bit of uh, whale watching, I want, to, I want to have a look at the chat. So we have... An Australian buddy. Uh, yes, I am in El Salvador right now, Michael. I am in El Salvador. Uh, we have Austin in the chat. Bitcoin going to zero all night hider. It's all going to zero. It's all going to zero. Did you buy the dip? Let me know, guys. Did you buy the dip? I want to know. Uh, we have producer Pam. Nadia says, I can't fathom how people think the top is in eight days before the Bitcoin halving. Great point, Nadia. The Bitcoin halving is literally eight days away. We haven't even begun to see what we normally see in all of these Bitcoin cycles, okay? Normally, the best part of the Bitcoin cycle actually comes 
after the Bitcoin halving, okay? Again, for anyone who's new, let's take a look at one of my favorite charts. And the only chart that I like is obviously the 12-year chart of Bitcoin. And geez, I've got some mess on here, guys. I'm sorry. I'm always making new charts for you guys. But you can typically see, like, if I were to slap some vertical lines on this, so it made a little bit more sense, you'll be able to see where the Bitcoin halvings are. So I think the 2016 halving was about, was it July? I think it was. So the vertical lines here is showing you guys uh, that this is when the Bitcoin halvings happen. And typically, after every vertical line, takes about a year to sometimes a year and a half before you actually see a cycle peak for Bitcoin. So we can see in 2012, we didn't see a cycle peak until 360. 65 days later in 2013. Similar thing happened after the 2016 halving. We actually didn't see that 2017 all-time high peak until 487 days later. Same thing here with the 2020 halving that happened in May. We didn't see the cycle peak until, have a look at that, that is 518 days later, which again, it's, you know, we are how many days away from the halving? Not many. Let's have a look. I want to actually bring up a uh, little bit of a halving countdown clock to show you guys what we're talking about here because we are, we're we close. I think we're about a week away from the Bitcoin halving, okay? Uh, so everybody has a Bitcoin halving countdown clock these days. Uh, so we can see here, this is one that I use a lot on the channel from Bitbo. We're seven days and four hours away from the Bitcoin halving. Okay, so this is interesting. History, history would suggest that the best of the bull market has not even begun. And it doesn't matter how you cut this cookie. Um, I think I'm incredibly bullish over the next 12 to 18 months. Um, again, expect volatility, but I'm incredibly bullish. I, I don't know how you couldn't be bullish. Um especially considering the grayscale outflows are actually beginning to slow down a little bit now. So I want to show you guys, I want to show you guys this chart. I want to hit the chat though, uh, because the chat is lively today. Okay, here we go. I'll, I'll answer Remy's question about Bitcoin being digital gold. So Bitcoin is supposed to be digital gold. So why did it crash today? While gold, gold rose. When folks worry about inflation, they go to alternative assets like gold. So why didn't Bitcoin go up today? Well, great question, Remy. I think we need to zoom out a little bit because again, I think a lot of noise can be caught on the daily timeframes. I mean, one of the reasons that Bitcoin had a little bit of a correction today was because of all the degen leverage in the space. So we showed you guys at the beginning of the live chat, we saw $800 million of liquidations in the Bitcoin market today. So again, I think it's worth mentioning that the Bitcoin market is more of a free market, okay? Bitcoin is not controlled by governments. There's not 300 uh, paper contracts for every one physical uh, contract of Bitcoin, like there is in the gold space. So the gold market is heavily, heavily manipulated. Um, I want to have a look at, I want to show you an interesting chart, because I think when you kind of zoom out and we do have a look at the differences between gold and Bitcoin, we can see some pretty interesting things because I wasn't aware of this until very recently. But a lot of people say, okay, you know, gold's a great store of value, okay? Like, uh, you know, gold is, you know, it's been a great store of value for, you know, what, 5,000 years. That's what people say. And don't get me wrong, I'm a gold bug. Uh, like I was buying gold uh, in 2016. I was buying gold before I was buying Bitcoin. Um, so again, I get it. I love gold. I I absolutely love it. Um, but I, I think gold. We have to. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to say that about gold yet. I want to show you guys a chart. So when you actually have a look and adjust for inflation, you can actually see that the gold price is actually lower than it was in 1980. So a lot of people say, "Oh, you know, gold's this phenomenal, great store of value." Well, it's really not. I mean, uh, gold's got a lot of catching up to do. So this chart's a little bit blurry because of the Wi-Fi, but I, I hope that's visible. Gold is lower than its 1980s peak that it set literally 40 years ago. If we were to have a look at the, the gold USD price, I mean, it looks brilliant, right? So this here is the 
uh, chart of gold. It looks phenomenal. Don't get me wrong, right? But when you zoom out a little bit, um, you know, gold's only... So gold was at $2,000 an ounce in 2012, okay? So I think what's worth mentioning is the fact that, uh, you know, gold's up, what, 10 15% since 2012? Okay, I'm going to try to show my... Ch- uh, producer Pam just came running in and told me the uh, I didn't have a chart up. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, so I'm going to show you first. Uh, good work, producer Pam. Thanks for catching me. Let me show you the, the chart of... Uh, so this is gold adjusted for CPI inflation. You can see it's actually lower than its 1980s peak. Okay, there's no, you know, that's just how it is. That's how the cookie's cut. Uh, I'm not manipulating the data. Um, when you adjust for inflation, gold is lower than its 1980 peak. So gold's been going down for 40 years. Okay, so I think, you know, comparing gold to Bitcoin, it, uh, it's not a comparison I like to make because the data is very clear. Bitcoin has absolutely destroyed gold. Uh, Bitcoin's up a million percent since 2008. When you have a look at this chart here, gold's up 10% since 2008. So gold was at, you know, what, 1937. That's the, pro- the Pico top for gold in 2011. And gold today is at $2,344. So gold is up. Um, let me try to draw, draw a line here. Gold is up 26%. Well, actually, that's been pretty favorable to gold. It's up 23% since March of 2020. But what has the money supply done since March of 2020? Uh, you know, the money supply is up over 100%. I know that the money supply has more than doubled since uh, March 2011. So the money supply is up by over 100% since then in the past 14 years. Gold's up 20%. What was it? 23%. Uh, gold has underperformed the money supply. So I think I always like to zoom out whenever we're comparing, you know, asset classes. And I think when you do that, it's become very clear that Bitcoin is the superior store of value and, you know, digital gold, uh, so to say. Uh, But Bitcoin also has network effects built into it. So Bitcoin's at, you know, what? 0.5% global adoption today. Uh, Bitcoin's a technology. Most people expect Bitcoin to be adopted by the majority of society, okay? Um, Again, Bitcoin is 1,000 times better than the previous technology. So the previous technology was fiat, okay? Fiat money. Uh, For a technology to actually go mainstream and disrupt its uh, monopoly competitor, it has to be 1,000 times better. So Bitcoin is 1,000 times better than fiat at at storing value and being a medium of exchange. Now, the reason that fiat outcompeted gold was because fiat was a thousand times better than gold at being used as a medium of exchange. Okay, yes, gold's a better store of value than fiat. 100% agree. I love gold. Um, but again, it's all about uh, competition. Uh, so Coz says, we're not going to read, we're not going to read, uh, we're not going to read uh, all the chat. It's lively today. It is absolutely lively. Okay. So we're going to talk a little bit more about the Bitcoin whales. I tend to agree with Dingo Booty. I'm guessing if we see a cycle top, it's probably 500 days away uh, because of this chart here that we checked out for anyone who's a little bit new to the live stream. Again, you can scroll back and watch the beginning of my rants. The beginning of the rants are normally a little bit better and and polished than the end of my rants because I'm running out of gas. not going to lie to you guys. It's 5.30 here in El Salvador and I've only had breakfast. So this is, this is the other thing I wanted to show you guys. Bitcoin whales are accumulating pre-halving, okay? So yes, the Bitcoin price is down, you know, 17%. But what are the whales doing? Well, the whales are accumulating Bitcoin. Let's have a look at what this article here is saying. Uh, so the Bitcoin whales are accumulating. This chart here is absolutely fascinating. Uh, so the purple line is actually showing you the permanent holder demand and look at it go absolutely parabolic recently okay it's going parabolic during the pre over the past four years okay so each stair step lower in the what are we going to call this color salmon we're going to call it orange every stair step lower in the orange is a bitcoin halving cycle i think it's fascinating that this last halving cycle for the past four years we've only watched the permanent holder demand increase. So that is the purple line going up. 
And that is obviously due to something that we talk about all the time here on the channel. And that is the fact that uh, for the first time in Bitcoin's life, over the past four years, we have watched an absolute supply suffocation. And that is because of billionaires like Michael Saylor entering the space. That is because of nation states like the Kingdom of Bhutan, like Oman and El Salvador and Russia all getting into mining Bitcoin, okay? We're in a new era for Bitcoin. And we can see that since this era began in 2020, uh, Michael Saylor is showing you the source and he's showing you, uh, you know, how Bitcoin has performed since we entered this new era of Bitcoin, since central banks began printing money out of the wazoo, okay? We can see, okay, so Jack's asking how much Bitcoin's left on exchanges. I believe it's about 1.7, 1.8 million. Depends upon the data source that you're using. Some uh, some providers say it's like 2.1. Others say it's about 1.8. Depends upon what data you're looking at. But even, doesn't matter what data you're looking at, the trend is very clear. We've seen a lot of Bitcoin leave exchanges since March of 2020, okay? Uh, so this is why price of Bitcoin's going bananas. Price of Bitcoin's up 463%. Have a look at that. Sorry, I need a drink. I've been rambling for 26 minutes straight. Um, all night hiders on 2x speed. Absolutely love to see it. I'm two, I'm a 2x speed maxi on everything. Okay, so again, I think this is bullish. The whales are accumulating Bitcoin, right? Uh, we can see it here. This is also the same chart. Whales are accumulating. This is another chart uh, that's also measuring whale demand from CryptoQuant. Uh, so these guys have got pretty good on-chain uh, data. And you can see that we're seeing, you know, Good whale demand. And you typically see this kind of demand in bear markets. So the last time that we saw a spike this big was back in the middle of 2018 when Bitcoin was at $6,000 in the middle of the bear market. Same thing with the 2021 bull market when Bitcoin was around $30,000 or $40,000. We saw a lot of whale demand. So I think we're seeing something similar today. I think all the data we can see is kind of showing us that we're in the you know early stages of a Bitcoin bull market. Obviously, the bull market started. Don't get me wrong, uh, but I believe we are in the early uh, the early stages, um, guys. With all that said, hope you enjoyed today's live stream. I'm going to keep this one short. I'm going to uh, try to keep them under 30 minutes. Thank you so much to everyone who joined. I was going to go live from the Bitcoin News uh, channel today as well, but probably going to save that one for tomorrow. Okay, so stay tuned for tomorrow. We've got two live streams coming at you. Um, and with all that said, thank you so much for tuning in. I will see you guys in another live stream. Thank you, Dingo Booty. Uh, and if you enjoyed it, don't forget to smash the like button. I would appreciate that. Um, so with all that said, thanks for joining guys. A uh, few new faces. We've got Remy in the chat. We've got Nadia in the chat. Jack's in the chat. Uh, great to see some new faces. I hope you're stacking Bitcoin. Again, we're in the early stages of a bull market. You're not late to Bitcoin. You don't need to buy any other assets. Don't get distracted. Um, buy Bitcoin, stack and chill. Um, uh, have a great day, guys. I will see you in the next live stream tomorrow. I got two of them, so stay tuned.